I'm not the one to fear. We've got more information on the upcoming Transformers Rise of the Beasts. The film has now cast one of the franchise's most iconic robots, first seen in the 2018 film Bumblebee once again. Not just that, fans think Michael Bay should have worked on G.I. Joe instead of Transformers, because Bumblebee successfully added a touch of humanity to the robots. Let's talk more about it, starting with Rise of the Beasts. Rise of the Beasts will be the seventh entry into the live-action Transformers franchise. The series is now trying to take a step back from the era of Michael Bay and head into films similar to Bumblebee, which Travis Knight directed in 2018. In the upcoming sci-fi epic, we'll see Anthony Ramos, the star from In the Heights, and Stephen Cable Jr., the director of Creed II, at the helm. The film is going to be quite different, mainly since it's a direct sequel to Bumblebee, instead of a continuation of the film by Bay centered around the iconic toys by Hasbro. Not just that, but with the franchise continuously evolving, they've cast a beloved character from both the Bumblebee and Michael Bay eras again. Next up, RC Recast. The Autobots mainstay RC has been recast for the franchise's upcoming film, Transformers Rise of the Beasts. According to reports from Deadline, the character is going to be voiced by the actress Liza Kashi in the upcoming film. The character loved by all fans from both the cartoon and comic series has appeared in the live-action adaptations twice. Once played by Greg Griffin Delisle in Revenge of the Fallen 2009, the actress then voiced the character again in Bumblebee's few starting minutes. Deadline also reported that a bunch more actors are joining the cast, such as John DiMaggio, David Sobolov, Cristo Fernandez, Toby Nwigwi, Michaela J. Rod Rodriguez, and Peter Dinklage. Let's look at why RC has been recast. Interestingly, they've decided to have three different actors voice the character's different live-action appearances. It would've made sense if the actor who initially voiced the character from Revenge of the Fallen wasn't down for it, but we see the actor return for Bumblebee's soft reboot. So then, why didn't they bring her back again for the upcoming film? The most likely reason is that the character will be much more critical to the film's plot this time. The character barely showed up in Bumblebee, only in the final battle in Cybertron, shown at the film's start. After they lose the battle, and Optimus Prime orders the Autobots to leave the planet, the character isn't seen for the rest of the entire film. As we got to see in the first trailer for the film, the ingenious robot warrior has a lot more to do with the plot this time. Similar to how it's been with multiple recasts from the MCU, it's safe to think that we're going to see a lot more of the character and why they've cast a different voice actor. Lastly, more from the first trailer. A first look at the trailer by Paramount Pictures shows us what's up in the latest film in the franchise. It will have things like the Maximals, the Predacons, and the Terracons. The upcoming film will have Anthony Ramos from In the Heights as its lead Noah, a veteran electronics expert who is unwillingly dragged between the battle between the factions of giant robots at war. Though he isn't alone, the character will have Elena by his side, played by the star from Judas and the Black Messiah, Dominique Fishback, who's a talented and ambitious artifact researcher. Elena is swept up in the conflict as the Autobots fight against a new nemesis. Other cast members include the star from Into the Spider-Verse, Lauren Velez, and Toby Nwigwi, the rapper. Along with them, we've got Peter Cullen coming back as Optimus Prime, Pete Davidson as Mirage, Bumblebee, who doesn't have a voice but was played by Dylan O'Brien in 2018, and Wheeljack, who Sebastian Maniscalco plays. Not just them, but the upcoming film will have Ron Perlman, the actor from Hellboy, as Optimus Primal, along with the star from Everything Everywhere All at Once, Michelle Yeoh, as Air Razor. The film will come out in the US on the 9th of June 2023. The studio has high hopes for the film, since they already have two more sequels in the works. Transformers – Why Michael Bay Should Have Directed G.I. Joe Instead Coming up, the end of an era. Following up on the success of 2018's Bumblebee and how positively the upcoming film is being received, viewers have slowly been falling in love again with the Transformers franchise. The era of Michael Bay's Transformers may have ended, but the director has left a legacy that can't be forgotten. Despite his films being incredibly financially successful, they still had much to be desired. It wasn't until 2018 that they finally went for another person as the director for more of the franchise's films. The director is known for how good he is with the action genre, especially since he's an expert at putting things together for the best action movies. But he might not have been the best choice for Transformers. Looking at his previous work, and even the projects he worked on after Transformers, all signs point to him being the obvious choice for the franchise. But maybe he would have been better off making a G.I. Joe film. Thank <laughs> you. 
Moving on to Transformers needed more of a human touch. The director's films were often criticized for focusing too heavily on humans. Despite that, the films always lacked the power of the natural human touch. Even scenes focusing only on humans were full of crude jokes that made it impossible to take anything seriously. That isn't exactly the best thing when the franchise is based on rivalries and friendships between the characters that should feel genuine. 2018's Bumblebee by Travis Knight tackled many of the issues fans had with the films and showed other ways to go about the films. The fans loved the relationship between Bumblebee and Charlie Watson, which later became the film's core. On the other hand, in Bay's The Last Night and Age of Extinction, the main character had rather surface-level relationships with the robots. In many ways, the Autobots were mainly warriors that sometimes did more than just fight. G.I. Joe would have been an excellent option for the director, since it's more aligned with his strengths and interests as a storyteller. The universe isn't as detailed, and a lot of characters can get by with just being basic archetypes. Not just that, but the absence of robot aliens would have made it easier to focus just on the humans. Next up, Michael Bay is known for military action and characters. Besides the Transformers franchise, the director has worked on movies like The Rock, Pearl Harbor, and 13 Hours, The Secret Soldiers of Benghazi. All of these are action films that focused on characters from the military, which got Bay a reputation for telling military stories. Even in Transformers, he gave the soldiers such as William Lennox and Robert Epps a lot of screen time. But if the soldiers were put in the G.I. Joe franchise, they would have felt much more in place, especially since the franchise has always shown its military characters as heroes, something that that Bay has also done in a lot of his work. For the Transformers series, the director worked with the US military to get many of the props and access to helicopters and F-22 stealth fighters. According to Wired, the Pentagon even changed parts of the script. It went so far that Revenge of the Fallen was often called one of the biggest films joint made by the military, at least by the film's liaison officer. According to reports by Variety, such movies have often been used to change the audience's perception of the military and even as tools to recruit more people. Admittedly, if humanity is fighting against alien robots, the military will be a part of it. But the director would at times forget that they were about the Transformers first and not just military films. That kind of focus on the military may have been a better choice for a G.I. Joe film, where almost all the characters are from a military background. Finally, G.I. Joe needs to be reinvented for the modern age. Neither of the films from the G.I. Joe franchise, The Rise of Cobra or Retaliation, could get the same success at the box office as Transformers. They were working on a third film for the series, but it never came to fruition, and the franchise fell out of relevancy with time. Paramount did try to bring it back during the pandemic with Snake Eyes' G.I. Joe Origins, but the film didn't live up to its expectations. Now the entire franchise's future looks doubtful. If Bay had directed the films from the very start, the franchise would have been in a much different place. His work on Transformers wasn't scared of going too far away from the source material and changing things up. That's a thing that the G.I. Joe franchise desperately needs to be appealing to a modern audience. Despite Bay's Transformers films having many issues, they were successful for a reason. That's a wrap for this video. What are your thoughts about the movie? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.